I have to say that popular Christianity, the big stuff that you see with all the churches and church buildings and everybody claiming to be a Christian, it is the most selfish, what should we call it, philosophy? It's the most, it's all about them. They harp on this thing that you have a free will and you can choose to become a Christian. Otherwise, if you don't make the right choice, you're going to go to hell forever. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm entitling this little episode, And You Thought the Gospel Was All About You. And you thought it was all about you. I'm sorry to bust your chops. I'm sorry to bust your religion. But the scriptures reveal, finally, through Paul, that it's not all about you. It's not even all about the Jews. It's not even all about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What is it about? It's all about God and Christ. <clears throat> okay? It's, you know, you, I know you want to think that you have a deeper understanding of everything, but I'm here to tell you that yeah, you don't understand much at all. I don't even understand much at all. But I can see with my eyes that there's something magical going on. Only because I have mostly gotten away from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the book of Revelation. And just because that's all for the circumcision. It's concerning their allotment during the coming eons of time. But what is God doing and saying through Paul? to the uncircumcision, the bad boys of Antioch, as I like to call them. Man, you, you get into Paul's stuff, and, and it's just mind-blowing, okay? So let's go over this Romans chapter 1, verse 1 again, and we'll hop over to verse 3 in just a second. But for the past couple of days, we've been looking at this. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, a called apostle, severed for the evangel of God. I've got it underlined right here. Severed for the evangel of God. Severed. What is the evangel of God? You thought it was all about you because popular Christianity does teach. Hey, how, you know, they, they, they rely on like John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes, whoever believes in him should not perish. Screw that. That's for That has something to do with Israel and primarily it'll come to fruition in the coming eons on the earth. We won't even be on the earth. We believers who are part of the ecclesia, which is his body, will be among the celestials. God's going to display the grace that he showed to us by bringing us in. What's it all about? What is the evangel of God? Jump down here to verse 3. It's concerning his son. The evangel. That's the good news, right? We translate it gospel or good news. The, the good news of God is concerning his son. There's a love affair going on between God and Christ. It hardly concerns you. I know that there's, you know, the way Christianity is set up, it's very, very solipsistic. Do you know that word, solipsistic? If you look it up, it means like the belief that only you exist and everything else is just spinning around you. Solipsistic is a fine word, and you should use it often, right? But Christians, by and large, false Christianity is very solipsistic. It means like I'm the only one solo. It's a solo thing. It's all about me. It's all about me. No, no, no. The gospel of God is concerning his son. I'll read the whole thing. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, a called apostle, severed for the evangel of God, which he promises through his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son who comes of the seed of David. This is what we're going to see. If we study Paul's material, we're going to see something about his son that, that just thrills the heart of God. We want to believe what God says. This is the Bible. It's just as much 
Bible is John 3.16 and Revelation and the great white throne. No, this is something wonderfully different, but it's still the Bible. The slave of Christ Jesus came to us and started talking about the evangel of God. What is it? We're not quite sure, but we, we know that it concerns his son. Okay, so let me show you. Let me take you over to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. There's this little phrase here that should indicate this love affair. Verse 13, he, he rescues us out of the jurisdiction of darkness and transports us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Do you see that phrase? The son of his love. He transports us into the kingdom of the son of his love. The gospel of God is concerning his son. He rescues us out of the jurisdiction of darkness and transports us. It's not about real us, really. He transports us into the kingdom of the son of his love. So Christianity would have all the emphasis going on this business of he rescues us out of the jurisdiction of darkness yippee we are rescued we 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 he rescues us no this is like an incidental thing that comes beforehand what is the main thrust of this that, w that should capture us it has something to do with the kingdom of the son of his love he transports us out of the jurisdiction of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love okay skip down here or over back up to Romans 6 and we then were entombed together with him through baptism into death even as Christ was roused from among the dead through what through the glory of the father was Christ roused from among the dead through the glory of God no he was roused from among the dead through the glory of the Father. There's something going on here between Christ and God. It's a love affair. It's a love affair. The gospel of God is concerning his son. And there's such a thing as the kingdom of the son of his love. This is, must be a wonderful thing. And it's, we're so lucky that he transports us out of the jurisdiction of darkness into this kingdom, which he mentions is the kingdom of the son of his love. And then the power that raised Christ from among the dead was the glory of the Father. It wasn't the glory of God. It was the glory of the Father. The Father's, the word glory has something to do with high esteem, you know, God was so proud of what Christ did on the cross that he, he, as the father, raised his boy from the, uh, from the dead. And then finally, over in Colossians 3, verse 3, chapter 3, verse 3, For you died, and your life is hid together with Christ in God. For you died and your life is hid together with Christ in God. It's almost not about you. It just so happens that your life is hid together with Christ in God. And whatever happens to Christ, ooh, it's going to happen to us too. And guess what? You must believe this stuff because it's true, whereas over in the corrupted, bullshit Christianity circles, they say you must believe in order to make it true. No, you must believe because it is true. Because you want to believe the truth, right? What is the truth? The truth is that the evangel of God is concerning his son. The truth is that he, trans he rescues us out of the jurisdiction of darkness and transports us into the kingdom of the son of his love. The truth is, 
Even as Christ was roused from among the dead through the glory of the Father, thus also we should be walking in newness of life. And then verse 3 of of Colossians 3, For you died, and your life is hid together with Christ in God. And so you can relax. You don't have to do anything. Your life is already hid together with Christ in God. You don't have to sweat it. This is not about you. It's about what God is doing in Christ. And I forgot to paste in the scripture from 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19 that says, God was in Christ, conciliating the world to himself. Do you get that? Not reckoning our offenses to us. and He's given to us the word of the conciliation. God was in Christ. God was in Christ. God was in Christ conciliating the world to himself. Your life is hid together with Christ in God. He transports us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. All this is concerning his Son because it is the evangel of God. And you thought it was all about you. 